Welcome back. I'm going to start off this video with a quote. Dan Ariely says, The more cashless our society becomes, the more our moral compass slips. I quote this because I've been exploring many options available for digital payments and as a non-avid user of many set services offered by today's standard. Wanted to share my experience with you so you can understand why going cashless may continue to rise. It may have its several advantages along with disadvantages by becoming a cashless society. Today, there are many ways to make cashless payments using credit or debit cards, mobile wallets, digital payment apps and UPI. Consumer spending makes up more than 70% of the economy, a major stimulus to growth during economic recoveries. I hope that you find this topic interesting and it inspires you to do your own research. So, let's get on to it. Cashless transaction burst onto the scene just after the 1990s when electronic banking became common. Today, cash is no longer the king. So, what is cash? What are its origins? The word cash is derived from Portuguese word caixa with its roots from Tamil word cas. First recorded data shows that coin took shape when Venetian merchants used silver bars in late 6th century. As world economy developed, silver and gold coins supply increased. By 17th century, the East India Company coins had fixed value rather than going by weight, containing both Urdu and English imprinted on them. There were parallel iteration from China and other nations that held their own records of coins, from round to square shape. Today, the capacity to print paper cash has made countries liable for management of inflation through control of the cash supply. The demand for cash is decreasing drastically. But make no mistake, cash is going nowhere. It will remain relevant today and perhaps in future as well. But what would happen if we remove cash from the equation? Or let's say a complete cashless society has taken over. This is not an illusion. In fact, many countries have been pulling back on the use of cash. Sweden by 2023 will be the world's first nation with its economy going 100% cashless. Today, that number stands at 85%. Matter of fact, when was the last time you had an opportunity to perform a big cash transaction? Maybe once for some, on the contrary, none for most here. The concept of cashless society is nothing new. If we look back, cashless transaction existed in times of barter and other medium of exchange. In recent times, it has shifted to using credit or debit cards mobile wallets, digital payment apps, UPI and bitcoins. So, what are the advantages of a cashless society? We will talk about the disadvantages and its pitfalls a bit later. Convenience Most of us are flocking towards turning into a cashless society is perhaps due to the ease of conducting transactions. No more standing in a line of an ATM machine. It gives you freedom to transact at your time and place rather than to be physically present under defined office hours. Imagine if you lose your cash or wallet, it's gone forever. On the contrary, we can block our credit or debit cards. In circumstances, reverse all fraudulent charges as well. It gives consumers ability to earn rewards loyalty points, discounts on purchases and helps in tracking your spending as every transaction is recorded and a report can be generated. Perhaps in a good way. Limits overspending by using a debit card. 
many applications and tools are available to help and result in a better budgeting plan. No more running around for coin change, exact amount can be transferred to the receiver or a small shop owner. So by the sound of it, cashless transactions are great. Then why don't we all drop our cash and jump onto the cashless train? It's all good, right? Well, not so much. The logo on your credit or debit cards which reads Visa or MasterCard are payment gateways. In simple terms, they are network processors, facilitating electronic funds transfer throughout the world, partnering with the banks to offer credit or debit cards and other services. For providing these services, they charge small percentage ranging from 0.5 to 3.5 percent of the transaction and is paid by the merchant called merchant fees. It is charged for every transaction customers make with business. Now, the number might seem small. In fact, imagine a small business like a grocery store. For every transaction a customer does, merchant fees is levied. That adds in for all transactions so the grocery store has to account all the expenses to run the business and the merchant fees added. The price of goods increase. All this extra expense subjected with merchant fees is passed on to the customers. Bank charge and additional credit debit card owners an annual maintenance charge. Credit cards represent a promise to pay. Interest on credit and finance charges also play a role when payment date is passed. So the question remains, are you getting the best bargain? In a recent report by Financial Express, capping the merchant fees by the government is not helping small shops to move to cashless transactions. Reluctant to leave a trail for the taxman, the smaller business are not persuaded to transact digitally. Every transaction is recorded. So, this brings us to another point I wanted to make. Identity theft. Your personal information is stolen via various methods. In fact, it's a shady business model with teams dedicated to steal your information by contacting you through email, phone or any medium. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you updated your status on Facebook or other social platforms? It's a reminder that information can be gathered and fraudulent transactions are just a click away. Innovation in commerce has always been to reduce friction and providing a better consumer experience. More the transaction, more good for the economic growth. With this promise and in solving overhead issues with additional steps faced by present digital payments comes a technology called QR codes, which stands for Quick Response. QR code in itself deserves a separate video. Let me know if you find that interesting and want us to make a video on it. In 1990s, QR was designed by Denso Wave, a company in Japan used for tracking and shipping in automobile industry. Today, QR codes are everywhere. You just need a smartphone with the desired app. User scans the QR code and recipients accept the payment, concluding the transaction. It negates merchant fee, infrastructure cost and brings in security with codes. These codes are just tools that exchange information with public key cryptography. QR code technology is so successful in many countries like China and India. In 2014, Tencent, a Chinese public company, introduced similar technology into their messaging app WeChat, allowing its users to make payments. Today in China, mobile payments account to 85%. WeChat has taken over traditional payment methods and has become the norm. It's come to be called as the China's Everything app. In India, small shop vendors, tea stalls to Mumbai Metro have adopted QR code payments. 
it has brought down merchant costs to almost zero. So, everything the consumer is spending on, all transactions are collected. Data versus a small merchant fee. I'll leave this question to you. What do you think is more valuable? Data or 0.5% of merchant fee to a politically hungry nation? It seems that today people have the appetite to go cashless and our economies are destined towards a cashless society. But for now, we are going to have to deal with the consequences of a cashless system. So, what's going to happen in the future? In my view, it's all going to lead to something big and unpleasant over the next decade. I'm unaware on the challenges that are going to come up. Or perhaps a new technology will come along the way and solve all the hurdles. I'm sure this will not be the end of the debate between cash versus cashless society. What do you think? Is cash out of date and not really necessary anymore? On the contrary, what happens if there is an internet outage? Do you think cash will turn around and make a comeback? If you have any reservation towards it or inclined that cash is obsolete, comment below. Are you looking for more or curious about our other videos? I'll leave the links in the description for you. You might find it interesting. You can support us on Patreon. If you like this video, feel free to give a thumbs up. Until next time, this is Noreen. See you soon.